Hey everybody, I thought we would take advantage of this opportunity to do a little bit of academic learning. We're going to talk today about TE Tuner, which is an app available for any platform. This is on an iPad, so it's a little bit bigger, easier to use if you're on some sort of a tablet. So just overview basics, and then we'll talk a little bit about how to use them in ways that are beneficial for our vocal practice. Along the bottom, in the lower left, it says tuner. This is what allows us to play or sing, and it will tell us how in tune we are compared to... a set variable. So, my piano happens to be pretty well in tune. We're looking for the green smiley face in the middle. Along the bottom, it tells us how sharp or flat we are. So if you'll notice when I play this middle C, right down here it runs just about one cent sharp. Most people, kind of your average person, can fairly easily hear five or six cents, um, certainly ten cents, but those of us who sing um, and really are focused on it, we can often tell the difference between just a few cents. I'll show you some apps later in a different video that can help train that part of your ear. So if I move this over to voice, uh, me singing, I mean, I'm going to play with my pitch a little bit and we'll see what happens here, sharp or flat. Ooh. So what we're looking for is not only a smiley face here, um, but we want this to be close to zero. So you'll notice when I started it was up here, it was quite sharp, and then I pushed down the pitch um, until it actually went slightly flat, which you can tell here. So I'll come back to this screen a little bit more in a moment. I'm going to walk you through these first and then I'll come back to this screen because it's going to be very valuable for us. The next one over is sound, and this is kind of our general pitch pipe. Um, we can make it look different. Right now it's the pitch wheel, and I think this is the most common way to use it. Some people also put it on this if you want to tune strings, like if you're on a guitar or whatever. And then um, if you want it to look like a keyboard. The easiest and most common one for our purposes is going to be this pitch wheel. So we have the name of the note around the outside, and it's in harmonic equivalent. So a C, is the same as a B sharp. A C sharp is the same as a D flat, etc. So this is pretty easy um, when you have the letter name of something. You don't have to be able to read music. You can just jump on here and touch the button. Down here, we have different sounds available to us. I quite like the clarinet sound. It's pretty um, well-rounded. You can do something that's very mechanical, like a saw wave. or a square wave. So that's talking about just real um, sound forms. Uh, the cat has come to join me, so say hi, Celeste. Or again, which isn't going to give us as distinct of a pitch because it's very multi-spectrum. So that's one of the reasons that I really like keeping this on B flat clarinet. Uh, it just asked me if I wanted to auto transpose. The answer to that is no, not unless we were playing a B flat clarinet um, and wanted it to do the transposition for us. Which brings me to this over in the lower right hand corner, transposition. We just want to make sure that that's at C plus zero. Uh, our concert reference, because it is 2020 and we are in the United States, leave that at 440. Um, over the years, we've had different. Um, decisions about how high or low a concert A is. And I'm going to choose English. That is my primary language. So over here in the upper left hand corner, we have temperament. To make that very easy, equal temperament is the way that a piano is tuned. All of the half steps are equal. Um, logarithmically, but you don't need to worry about that. They're equal. When we switch this over to just intonation, that gives us a little bit more flexibility and it's really truer to how we would sing a cappella or how um, a 
high level orchestra would play depending on what it is they were doing. The problem with just intonation as far as using this for an exercise is you'd have to dig kind of deep into um, theory to know when that is appropriate and when it's not. One of the places that's most helpful for us is when we're learning to tune a perfect fifth. So if I was going to be, um, we're in the key of C, you double tap to pick a key. If I was going to sustain a C and then I wanted to have a perfectly tuned G, which is one, two, three, four, five. The sound in just intonation is more perfect. If I switch over to equal temperament, it's not as nice. So that is one place um, that that's helpful. And I'll make it, I'll put it on my list to do a video about that later. So for right now, for our purposes, let's leave this in equal temperament. Um, over here on the right, there is a metronome feature we can access from here. I'm gonna leave that alone for now. And VIB stands for vibrato. If I turn that on, we get a wah, 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 wah. vibrato in the sound, which is not really helpful for what we're doing. All right. Down here at the bottom, we have different forms of analysis we can look at. So this shows pitch, um, pitch. So right there, it shows me that I'm singing a G. I wasn't singing in tune, but um, <laughs> there was a G. And then you can have it show um, waveform. That's the blue. It's kind of a lot. The thing that I find to be most helpful down in this menu is either harmonic, and this is going to show us which overtones are being produced, and I'll make another video about that. Gosh, there's all these things I want to do now. And then this one here, which is a staff, which is really neat. Um, it's picking me up speaking right here, but I'm going to just play five notes on the piano. And that shows us where we are on the staff, which is helpful. Like maybe you're singing something and, uh, maybe reading music is not the easiest for you. You can sing a note and make sure that it's on the right staff compared to this sheet music. Metronome is the next over. So when you when we give you a tempo, there it is. That has a lot of features and also for another time. So I'm going to go back to um, sound. This is where we can actually find some things that are going to be helpful um, immediately that we can start doing immediately. So I'm just going to bring you through a couple little exercises. For example, how to use this in warm up for ear training. I like working an octave four. Um, it gives a kind of a bright pitch that we can hear over what we're doing. Um, depending on, we could also go to octave three, uh, which is only going to start, it only goes down to a D. So starting an octave four, we have access to all of the notes. I'm going to hit sustain because I want the note to hold. And I'm going to start with a C. Now what I'm going to do are some vocal warm-ups um, that um, can help with ear training. This is going to allow us to go up and down five notes and compare what we're singing, singing to the pitch that's being produced. For example, just matching that unison pitch, if you notice that I can vary my own sound in a way to be inclusive of the pitch that's being produced or I can make it fight it. So if I want to fight it, it's going to be Those aren't matching timbres. But if we do So there's one thing I can do is just sing a scale, a five note scale or all the way up and down against this and hear where my voice fits in. Um, depending on which sound I use down here, um, if I move over to flute, that's going to have a little bit of a different sound to sing against, which is also a good sound. Let me move this down an octave, octave four. See, it popped itself back in octave five, and I had to stop it and start over. So here's flute, and I'm going to do... And you hear where I hit that fifth 
it kind of creates a place where it locks in um, and buzzes in a good way, as opposed to in an out of tune way, which is gonna be this. And I don't know if you can tell over um, the computer there, but um, there is a chatter that you'll hear when you go up against this sound. So you can pick any note and go up and down five notes and just practice. I practice my octaves in there. I practice a whole scale. Um, then I can also take whatever key I'm in, so it's B flat, and I could sing. Um, doo, doo, I'm looking here. Doo, 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 doo. Now, an equal temperament. Um, there's some wiggle room there, uh, so I really like this as an ear training moment. I want to go back to tuner for just a minute um, and talk about this little button right here. This is how sensitive uh, this device is going to be, how quickly it responds. So if you set it on um, wind, strings, or voice over here, voice is going to be the easiest to control. Uh, it's where I would always recommend starting because if you get it to wind or strings, it's going to be a little bit harder However, once you kind of master using it on voice, it's fun to go back and see if you can get it to this, uh, be as successful on winds or strings. In tune range, wide is honestly not going to be that helpful unless you're more of a beginner singer. So if I have this on wide, I'm gonna play middle C. <sighs> Fairly in tune, but you're gonna notice that I'm gonna get a smiley face even if I'm singing pretty out of tune. <clears throat> Ooh, sounds pretty bad compared to this. Still giving me a smiley face. So that's where this number down here is very important. We want to get as close to zero as possible. If you can get it within five, that's pretty good. We want as close to zero as possible though. <clears throat> Sorry, I had to take a little water break there. Hopefully my cat will be more calm now as well. So um, our goal again, green smiley face, but the number as close to zero as possible. You'll notice if I change this from voice wide to medium or fine or ultra fine, it's going to be much harder to get it in tune. So I'm going to go to ultra fine, leave it on voice. Here's my note. Okay. And I'm going to try that on. So you notice I started a little bit sharp and brought it down um, and it was pickier about when it was giving me a smiley face. If we were to do that on strings or winds it would be even harder so I would recommend starting voice, ultra fine, and on the damping I have it normal. Um, that just kind of tells us how quickly it's going to respond so we've got little wobbles in our voice. Um, we don't want it to be flashing all over the place like it is when I'm speaking. I would encourage playing with this. So as I move through the different vowels, it might show that um, some of my vowels are sharper or flatter than others. So that's a really good thing to notice. Um, back to sound, I'll give you another um, exercise. So if I was to do something like, one, two, three, four, five, and I'm just going to do this backwards. So I'm going to do um, five, four, three, two, one, and I can do that on any of our vowels or any of our favorite things to sing. Sulu, sulu, su, ha, ma, 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 ma. And when I listen to that, I think, okay, so my ah was harder to tune than my eh, so it's something I can go back and play with. 
All right, so there is your first tutorial about TE Tuner. Enjoy. Um, let me know what questions you have, and I will see if I can answer them in a future video. And Celeste the cat says hi.